Thank you. Please close the door. Mr. Yarmuth, you are recognized for an amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 2309, offered by Mr. Yarmuth of Kentucky. The gentleman is recognized to uh, speak on his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Section 409 of H.R. 2309, the, the substitute amendment, takes away Congress's authority to reimburse the Postal Service for costs incurred in public service, including meeting the requirements of the Uniformed and Overseas Citizens Absentee Voting Act in carrying balloting materials expeditiously and free of postage for, un, for uniformed service voters, their spouses and dependents, as well as other eligible U.S. citizens living abroad. It also removes the authority to reimburse for making deliveries for blind or other handicapped persons free of charge. My amendment is simple. It will strike Section 409 to demonstrate how highly we value our service members and their families' ability to exercise their right to vote. It will also demonstrate our commitment to ensuring that blind individuals and other people with disabilities are able to participate fully in society. The majority wisely decided to maintain Congress's authorization to reimburse the Postal Service for the loss in revenue from providing free mail delivery to members of the armed forces on duty in combat areas. But it chose not to preserve the ability to compensate the Postal Service for the cost of implementing the requirements of the Uniformed and Overseas Citizens Absentee Voting Act to carry balloting materials expeditiously and free of postage. Unfortunately, this provision sends the message that Congress does not value our service members and their families' ability to participate in our democracy, uh, which they have dedicated their lives to preserving. Furthermore, it excludes the cost of sending balloting materials to members of our armed forces, as well as any material or any mail to or from members not in combat zones and those members' families. It seems to me ironic that we would, in, in our good judgment, um, require the Postal Service to help facilitate democracy, particularly with our men and women who are fighting overseas to preserve that democracy, while at the same time we are willing to subsidize American business by allowing them to send their marketing materials and other things at costs that are far below what they could generate or they could pay in any other private venture. So, it seems to me that this is a very simple, straightforward amendment that says we truly value our armed forces' right to vote. We have required the Postal Service to carry those ballots, and those materials, expeditiously and free of postage, and yet we are not willing to uh, allow Federal funds to subsidize the facilitation of that democracy. With that, I. Um, I urge my colleagues to support the amendment, and I reserve the balance of my time. I recognize myself in opposition to the gentleman's amendment. Although well intended, uh, I would like to give you the practical ramification. We require the Post Office to deliver to every point in America and every point overseas in which an American is serving on behalf of the American people, whether it is a U.S. Embassy, consulate, military reservation, the like. No other area is funded. Additionally, the invalid and others that are shut in receive to-the-door service, special service to ensure that their mail is there if they cannot get out to, the, to the, the, the postal box and the like. We do all of this based on a unique situation of the post office, one in which they set the rates, they have a monopoly, and they live within their means. Over the past few months, as this bill had this provision in it, the uh, post office has proudly said they never take a penny of taxpayers' money. They do take a penny of taxpayers' money. And with that taxpayers' money has hysterically, historically come hundreds over a period of time, but billions per year of unfunded mandates. The post office has been told what to do and how to do it using unrelated funds, these few less than $100 million worth of funds. The Postmaster has repeatedly told this committee under both Republican and Democratic chairman that he has no problem at all keeping this mandate. It is part of his mandate broadly uh, and doing it within the fee base. So at a time in which we are fully intending to extend 
ten billion dollars of additional loan authority at a very reduced rate give back any possible funding we can from any account we can find it from you know as we like to say a billion here a billion there pretty soon they will have real money to spend taking this off does two things and I and I appreciate and I want to as a veteran I want to tell you there is nothing more important than making sure that our overseas servicemen State Department individuals and the like receive their ballots and certainly that the blind continue to receive a very narrow but deserved uh, blind assistance, basically books on tape and the like, as they do. But with the Postmaster's assurance that by taking away the periodic uh, limitations that he gets and, and unfunded mandates, he is better able to plan. Lastly, and, and I think it is probably one of the, uh, the important things, is the Postmaster has uncertainty when you appropriate funds and then those funds come down to the limit, hours or days. By taking this away, he, will be, he and his governing board will be 100 percent free to plan to deliver every single day with no shutdown possible, no matter what is happening in Washington, no matter how we get to the brink again and again. So I support the gentleman in every sense of what he wants to accomplish. I reluctantly will oppose the amendment, but I oppose it because the Postmaster has told both Republican and Democratic chairmen of this committee that this is something that he would like to have like to have the ability to put it in the fee, like to have the ability to run the post office, and he can do a better, cheaper job by doing it. But I would certainly uh, ask the gentleman and, and would ask unanimous consent the gentleman be allowed to put such language into the bill as to state the importance of that mail, the importance of our servicing our, our servicemen around the world, uh, and the expectation that that would be done. Uh, you don't have to withdraw the amendment. That's up to you. But, uh, but I certainly would work together with you on a unanimous basis to find that language uh, to include it in the report language of the bill, because I think your principle is absolutely correct. And with that, I would yield back. The question now occurs on the amendment. All those in chairman, yes, sir. chairman, may I be heard? Of course, the gentleman's right. I want to yield to the gentleman. Did you want to? Uh, and then I want to say something. Thank you. I would yield, like to, to respond one way, and I, and I appreciate the sympathies, and I think we all uh, want to make sure that our service men and women have every opportunity to participate fully in democracy. Uh, my only question is I don't know why we would have, uh, we would need to prohibit the Congress from being able to fund this. Uh, it seems to me that uh, it's certainly retaining the flexibility to do it would make sense in case the, all the projections and all the, all the um, uh, good intentions of the Postal Service and the Director, uh, uh, if they happen to not pan out the way we had expected, that we ought to be able to at least have the ability to, uh, to provide that funding if it became absolutely necessary. So with that, I appreciate the ranking members yielding, and I yield back to him. Thank you very much. I would, Mr. Chairman, I just <clears throat> want a note of just the whole idea of us paying for this. Um, you know, I, I've been watching some things happening um, unrelated in a way to this, but in 38 states, we're seeing voters' rights being taken away. And um, I've often said that we have to guard this democracy. And I realize that this is, you know, an issue of you know, whether who's going to pay for these ballots and whatever. But we, we tell the postmaster what to do, it seems, all the time. And um, it just seems that um, there are certain things that I think we need to, to really look at, and I'm hoping that you will work with the gentleman. I, I'm telling you, it's sort of frightening, and this is on another note, to see that we uh, estimated that 5 million people will not be able to vote in the United States in the next election because of things that are doing, being done in various states in this country, and I know. But um, I think, again, we have to, uh, anything that promotes this democracy, you know, there's, there's a commercial that says, says all these things, and then they say priceless. This democracy is priceless. And I think if there are things that we can do to make sure that that happens, we need to do it. And, and we, I don't think we have any reluctance trying to tell the postal master what to do. 
and it's all your bank. I thank the gentleman. The question now occurs on the amendment. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed, nay. Nay. In the opinion of the chairs, the noes have it, the noes have it. The amendment is not agreed to. Uh, the gentleman requests a roll call vote. It will be postponed. Are there any final amendments? Seeing none, gentlemen, find the sheet and we'll go to the. Pursuant to the rules, recorded votes have been requested on the following the Cummings Amendment, the Lynch Amendment, the Clay Amendment, the Burkle Amendment, the Norton Amendment, the Connolly Amendment, the Murphy Amendment, the Braley Amendment, and the Yarmouth Amendment. Total of nine. With that, we will, we will first uh, call up the uh, Cummings Amendment. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Issa. No. Mr. Issa votes no. Mr. Burton. Mr. Micah. Mr. Platts. Mr. Platts votes no. Mr. Turner. Mr. Turner votes no. Mr. McHenry. Mr. Jordan. Mr. Chaffetz. Mr. Chaffetz votes no. Mr. Mack. Mr. Mack votes no. Mr. Wahlberg. Mr. Wahlberg votes no. Mr. Langford. Mr. Langford votes no. Mr. Amash. Mr. Amash votes no. Ms. Burkle. Mr. Gosar, Mr. Labrador, Mr. Meehan, Mr. Desjardins, Mr. Desjardins votes no, Mr. Walsh, Mr. Gowdy, Mr. Gowdy votes no, Mr. Ross, Mr. Ross votes no, Mr. Ginta, Mr. Farenthold, no, Mr. Farenthold votes no, Mr. Kelly, Mr. Kelly votes no. Mr. Cummings, Mr. Cummings votes yes. Mr. Towns, Mr. Towns votes yes. Ms. Maloney, Ms. Maloney votes yes. Ms. Norton, Ms. Norton votes yes. Mr. Kucinich, Mr. Tierney, Mr. Tierney votes yes. Mr. Clay, Mr. Clay votes yes. Mr. Lynch, Mr. Lynch votes yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Cooper votes yes. Mr. Connolly? Mr. Quigley? Mr. Quigley votes yes. Mr. Davis? Mr. Davis votes yes. Mr. Braley? Mr. Braley votes yes. Mr. Welch? Mr. Welch votes yes. Mr. Yarmouth? Mr. Yarmouth votes yes. Mr. Murphy? Mr. Murphy votes yes. Ms. Spear? They need to say. We do not have Mr. Burton recorded. Mr. Burton votes no. Mr. Kucinich. Mr. Kucinich votes yes. Mr. Micah. You are not, sir? Mr. Micah votes no. Thank you. 
Mr. Connolly. Mr. Connolly votes aye. And Nia's right behind me. All right. Making sure every vote is counted is something I learned when I came in in 2000. Mr. Meehan, you are not recorded. Mr. Meehan votes no. Mr. McHenry, you are not recorded. Thank the gentleman. Mr. McHenry votes no. Does anyone wish to change their vote? Have all members voted? The clerk will call the roll, or the clerk will report. Uh, on that vote, Mr. Chairman, there are 17 no's, 16 ayes. The amendment is not adopted. We next go to the Lynch Amendment. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Issa? No. Mr. Issa votes no. Mr. Burton? No. Mr. Burton votes no. Mr. Micah? Mr. Bynka votes no. Mr. Platts? Mr. Platts votes aye. Mr. Turner? Mr. Turner votes no. Mr. McHenry? No. Mr. McHenry votes no. Mr. Jordan? Mr. Chaffetz? Mr. Chaffetz votes no. Mr. Mack? Mr. Mack votes no. Mr. Wahlberg? Mr. Lankford? Mr. Amash? Mr. Amash votes no. Ms. Burkle? Mr. Gosar? Mr. Labrador, Mr. Meehan, Mr. Meehan votes no, Mr. Uh, Mr. Desjardins, Mr. Desjardins votes no, Mr. Walsh, Mr. Gowdy, Mr. Gowdy votes no, Mr. Ross, Mr. Ross votes no, Mr. Ginta, Mr. Farenthold, no, Mr. Farenthold votes no, Mr. Kelly, Mr. Kelly votes no, Mr. Cummings, Mr. Cummings votes no, I, I, I'm sorry, votes yes. Mr. Towns, Mr. Towns votes yes. Ms. Maloney, Mr. Uh, Ms. Maloney votes aye. Ms. Norton, Ms. Norton votes aye. Mr. Kucinich, Mr. Kucinich votes aye. Mr. Tierney, Mr. Tierney votes aye. Mr. Clay, Mr. Clay votes aye. Mr. Lynch, Mr. Lynch votes aye. Mr. Cooper, Mr. Cooper votes aye. Mr. Connolly, aye. Mr. Connolly votes aye. Mr. Quigley. Mr. Quigley votes aye. Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis votes aye. Mr. Braley. Mr. Braley votes aye. Mr. Welch. Mr. Welch votes aye. Mr. Yarmouth. Mr. Yarmouth votes yes. Mr. Murphy. Mr. Murphy votes yes. Ms. Spear. Ms. Burkle? Ms. Burkle votes no. Mr. Jordan? Mr. Jordan votes no. Mr. Burkle votes, uh, Ms. Burkle votes no. Mr. Labrador? Mr. Labrador votes no.
The clerk will report. On that vote, Mr. Chairman, 17 ayes, 19. Uh, well, the clerk will hold. Mr. Gosar. No. Mr. Gosar votes no. The clerk will report. 17 ayes, 20 noes. The amendment is not agreed to. The next amendment is on the Clay Amendment. Uh, the clerk will call the roll. Mr. Issa. No. Mr. Issa votes no. Mr. Burton. No. Mr. Burton votes no. Mr. Micah. Mr. Micah votes no. Mr. Platts. Mr. Platts votes no. Mr. Turner. Mr. Turner votes no. Mr. McHenry. Mr. McHenry votes no. Mr. Jordan. Mr. Jordan votes no. Mr. Chaffetz. Mr. Chaffetz votes no. Mr. Mack. Mr. Mack votes no. Mr. Wahlberg. Mr. Wahlberg votes no. Mr. Lankford. Mr. Lankford votes no. Mr. Mosh. Mr. Mosh votes no. Ms. Burkle. Ms. Burkle votes no. Mr. Gosar. Mr. Gosar votes no. Mr. Labrador. Mr. Labrador votes no. Mr. Meehan. Mr. Meehan votes no. Mr. Desjardins. Mr. Desjardins votes no. Mr. Walsh. Mr. Gowdy. Mr. Gowdy votes no. Mr. Ross. Mr. Ross votes no. Mr. Ginta. Mr. Farenthold. Mr. Farenthold votes no. Mr. Kelly. Mr. Kelly votes no. Mr. Cummings. Mr. Cummings votes yes. Mr. Towns. Mr. Towns votes yes. Ms. Maloney. Yes. Ms. Maloney votes yes. Ms. Norton. Ms. Norton votes yes. Mr. Kucinich. Yes. Mr. Kucinich votes yes. Mr. Tierney. Yes. Mr. Tierney votes yes. Mr. Clay. Yes. Mr. Clay votes yes. Mr. Lynch. Yes. Mr. Lynch votes yes. Mr. Cooper. Yes. Mr. Cooper votes yes. Mr. Connolly. Aye. Mr. Connolly votes yes. Mr. Quigley. Mr. Quigley votes yes. Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis votes yes. Mr. Braley. Mr. Braley votes yes. Mr. Welch. Mr. Welch votes yes. Mr. Yarmouth. Mr. Yarmouth votes yes. Mr. Murphy. Mr. Murphy votes yes. Ms. Spear. And Mr. Ginta, we don't have you recorded. Mr. Ginta votes no. The clerk will report. On that vote, Mr. Chairman, 16 ayes, 22 nays. The amendment is not agreed to. We next call up the Burkle Amendment. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Issa? Yes. Mr. Issa votes yes. Mr. Burton? Mr. Burton votes yes. Mr. Micah? Mr. Micah votes yes. Mr. Platts? Mr. Platts votes yes. Mr. Turner? Mr. Turner votes yes. Mr. McHenry? Mr. McHenry votes yes. Mr. Jordan? Mr. Jordan votes yes. Mr. Chaffetz? Mr. Chaffetz votes yes. Mr. Mack? Yes. Mr. Mack votes yes. Mr. Wahlberg? Yes. Mr. Wahlberg votes yes. Mr. Langford? Yes. Mr. Langford votes yes. Mr. Amash? No. Mr. Amash, Amash votes no. Ms. Burkle? Yes. Ms. Burkle votes no. Mr. Gosar? Uh, I think I heard a yes. I, I, okay. <laughs> oh, I put you down as yes and said no. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ms. Burkle is a yes. Mr. Gosar? Yes. Mr. Gosar is a yes. Mr. Labrador? Mr. Labrador, yes. Mr. Meehan? Mr. Meehan, yes. Dr. Desjardins? Dr. Desjardins votes yes. Mr. Walsh? Mr. Gowdy? Mr. Gowdy votes yes. Mr. Ross? Mr. Ross votes yes. Mr. Ginta? Yes. Mr. Ginta votes yes. Mr. Farenthold? Yes. Mr. Farenthold votes yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Kelly votes yes. Mr. Cummings? Mr. Cummings votes no. Mr. Towns? Mr. Towns votes no. Mr. Maloney? Ms. Maloney votes no. Ms. Norton? Ms. Norton votes no. Mr. Kucinich? No. Mr. Kucinich votes no. Mr. Tierney? No. Mr. Tierney votes no. Mr. Clay? No. Mr. Clay votes no. Mr. Lynch? No. Mr. Lynch votes no. Mr. Cooper? No. Mr. Cooper votes no. Mr. Connolly? Nay. Mr. Connolly votes no. Mr. Quigley? No. Mr. Quigley votes no. Mr. Davis? No. Mr. Davis votes no. Mr. Braley? No. Mr. Braley votes no. Mr. Welch? No. Mr. Welch votes no. Mr. Yarmouth? Mr. Yarmouth votes no. Mr. Murphy? Mr. Murphy votes no. Ms. Spear? The clerk will report. On that vote, Mr. Chairman, there are 21 ayes, 17 noes. The amendment is agreed to. 
The next amendment is the Norton Amendment. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Issa? No. Mr. Issa votes no. Mr. Burton? Mr. Burton? Mr. Micah? Mr. Micah votes no. Mr. Platts? Mr. Platts votes no. Mr. Turner? Mr. Turner votes no. Mr. McHenry? No. Mr. McHenry votes no. Mr. Jordan? No. Mr. Jordan votes no. Mr. Chaffetz? No. Mr. Chaffetz votes no. Mr. Mack? No. Mr. Mack votes no. Mr. Wahlberg? No. Mr. Wahlberg votes no. Mr. Langford? No. Mr. Langford votes no. Mr. Amash? No. Mr. Amash votes no. Ms. Burkle? No. Ms. Burkle votes no. Mr. Gosar? No. Mr. Gosar votes no. Mr. Labrador? No. Mr. Labrador votes no. Mr. Meehan? No. Mr. Meehan votes no. Mr. Desjardins? Mr. Desjardins votes no. Mr. Walsh? Mr. Gowdy? Mr. Gowdy votes no. Mr. Ross? No. Mr. Ross votes no. Mr. Ginta? No. Mr. Ginta votes no. Mr. Farenthold? No. Mr. Farenthold votes no. Mr. Kelly? No. Mr. Kelly votes no. Mr. Cummings? Yes. Mr. Cummings votes yes. Mr. Mr. Towns? Yes. Mr. Towns votes yes. Ms. Maloney? Yes. Ms. Maloney votes yes. Ms. Norton? Ms. Uh, Norton votes yes. Mr. Kucinich? Mr. Kucinich votes yes. Mr. Tierney? Yes. Mr. Tierney votes yes. Mr. Clay? Aye. Mr. Clay votes yes. Mr. Lynch? Aye. Mr. Clay, uh, Mr. Lynch votes yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Cooper votes yes. Mr. Connolly? Yes. Mr. Connolly votes yes. Mr. Quigley? Yes. Mr. Quigley votes yes. Do uh, Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Davis votes yes. Mr. Braley? Mr. Braley votes yes. Mr. Welch? Yes. Mr. Welch votes yes. Mr. Yarmouth? Mr. Yarmouth votes yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Mr. Murphy votes yes. Ms. Spear? The clerk will report. That vote, Mr. Chairman, 16 ayes, 22 noes. The amendment is not agreed to. We next go to the Connolly Amendment. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Issa? No. Mr. Issa votes no. Mr. Burton? No. Mr. Burton votes no. Mr. Micah? No. Mr. Micah votes no. Mr. Platts? No. Mr. Platts votes no. Mr. Turner? No. Mr. Turner votes no. Mr. McHenry? No. Mr. McHenry votes no. Mr. Jordan? No. Mr. Jordan votes no. Mr. Chaffetz? No. Mr. Chaffetz votes no. Mr. Mack? No. Mr. Mack votes no. Mr. Wahlberg? No. Mr. Wahlberg votes no. Mr. Langford? No. Mr. Langford votes no. Mr. Amash? No. Mr. Amash votes no. Ms. Burkle? Mr. Burkle votes no. Mr. Gosar? No. Mr. Gosar votes no. Mr. Labrador? No. Mr. Labrador votes no. Mr. Meehan? No. Mr. Meehan votes no. Mr. Desjardins? No. Mr. Desjardins votes no. Mr. Walsh? Mr. Gowdy? Mr. Gowdy votes no. Mr. Ross? No. Mr. Ross votes no. Mr. Ginta? No. Mr. Ginta votes no. Mr. Barenthold? No. Mr. Barenthold votes no. Mr. Kelly? No. Mr. Kelly votes no. Mr. Cummings? Mr. Cummings votes aye. Mr. Towns? Mr. Towns votes aye. Ms. Maloney? Aye. Ms. Maloney votes aye. Ms. Norton? Aye. Ms. Norton votes aye. Mr. Kucinich? Aye. Mr. Kucinich votes aye. Mr. Tierney? Aye. Mr. Tierney votes aye. Mr. Clay? Aye. Mr. Clay votes aye. Mr. Lynch? Aye. Mr. Lynch votes aye. Mr. Cooper? Mr. Connolly? Aye. Mr. Connolly votes aye. Mr. Quigley? Aye. Mr. Quigley votes aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mr. Davis votes aye. Mr. Braley? Aye. Mr. Braley votes aye. Mr. Welch? Mr. Welch votes aye. Mr. Yarmouth? Yes. Mr. Yar Yarmouth votes aye. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Mr. Murphy votes aye. Ms. Spear? Yes. Ms. Spear votes yes. Uh, how is Mr. Cooper reported? Mr. Cooper is not. Mr. Cooper votes yes. The clerk will report. On that vote, Mr. Chairman, 17 ayes, 22 noes. The amendment is not agreed to. The next amendment will be Murphy labeled Norton 93. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Issa? No. Mr. Issa votes no. Mr. Burton? No. Mr. Burton votes no. Mr. Micah? No. Mr. Bi Micah votes no. Mr. Platts? No. Mr. Platts votes no. Mr. Turner? Mr. Turner votes no. Mr. McHenry? No. Mr. McHenry votes no. Mr. Jordan? No. Mr. McJordan votes no. Mr. Chaffetz? No. Mr. Chaffetz votes no. Mr. Mack? No. Mr. Mack votes no. Mr. Wahlberg? No. Mr. Wahlberg votes no. Mr. Langford? No. Mr. Langford votes no. Mr. Amash? No. Mr. Amash votes no. Ms. Burkle? No. 
Ms. Burkle votes no. Mr. Gosar? No. Mr. Gosar votes no. Mr. Labrador? No. Mr. Labrador votes no. Mr. Meehan? No. Mr. Meehan votes no. Mr. Desjardins? No. Mr. Desjardins votes no. Mr. Walsh? Mr. Gowdy? No. Mr. Gowdy votes no. Mr. Ross? Mr. Ross votes no. Mr. Ginta? No. Mr. Ginta votes no. Mr. Farenthold? No. Mr. Farenthold votes no. Mr. Kelly? No. Mr. Kelly votes no. Mr. Cummings? Mr. Cummings votes aye. Mr. Towns? Mr. Towns votes aye. Ms. Maloney? Ms. Maloney votes aye. Ms. Norton? Ms. Norton votes aye. Mr. Kucinich? Mr. Kucinich votes aye. Mr. Tierney? Mr. Tierney votes aye. Mr. Clay? Mr. Clay votes aye. Mr. Lynch? Mr. Lynch votes aye. Mr. Cooper? Mr. Cooper votes aye. Mr. Connolly? Aye. Mr. Connolly votes aye. Mr. Quigley? Aye. Mr. Quigley votes aye. Mr. Davis? Mr. Davis votes aye. Mr. Braley? Mr. Braley votes aye. Mr. Welch? Mr. Welch votes aye. Mr. Yarmouth? Mr. Yarmouth votes aye. Mr. Murphy? Mr. Murphy votes aye. Ms. Spear? Ms. Spear votes aye. The clerk will report. On that vote, Mr. Chairman, 17 ayes, 22 noes. The amendment is not agreed to. The next amendment is the Braley of Iowa's amendment. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Issa? No. Mr. Issa votes no. Mr. Burton? Mr. Burton votes no. Mr. Micah? No. Mr. Micah votes no. Mr. Platts? No. Mr. Platts votes no. Mr. Turner? No. Mr. Turner votes no. Mr. McHenry? No. Mr. McHenry votes no. Mr. Jordan? Mr. Jordan votes no. Mr. Chaffetz? No. Mr. Chaffetz votes no. Mr. Mack? No. Mr. Mack votes no. Mr. Wahlberg? No. Mr. Wahlberg votes no. Mr. Langford? No. Mr. Langford votes no. Mr. Amash? No. Mr. Amash votes no. Ms. Burkle? No. Ms. Burkle votes no. Mr. Gosar? No. Mr. Gosar votes no. Mr. Labrador? No. Mr. Labrador votes no. Mr. Meehan? No. Mr. Meehan votes no. Mr. Desjardins? No. Mr. Desjardins votes no. Mr. Walsh? Mr. Gowdy? No. Mr. Gowdy votes no. Mr. Ross? Mr. Ross votes no. Mr. Ginta? No. Mr. Ginta votes no. Mr. Farenthold? No. Mr. Farenthold votes no. Mr. Kelly? No. Mr. Kelly votes no. Mr. Cummings? Mr. Cummings votes aye. Mr. Towns? Mr. Towns votes aye. Ms. Maloney? Aye. Ms. Maloney votes aye. Ms. Norton? Ms. Norton votes aye. Mr. Kucinich? Yes. Mr. Kucinich votes aye. Mr. Tierney? Aye. Mr. K uh, Tierney votes aye. Mr. Clay? Aye. Mr. Clay votes aye. Mr. Lynch? Aye. Mr. Lynch votes aye. Mr. Cooper? Mr. Cooper votes aye. Mr. Connolly? Aye. Mr. Connolly votes aye. Mr. Quigley? Aye. Mr. Quigley votes aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mr. Davis votes aye. Mr. Braley? Aye. Mr. Braley votes aye. Mr. Welch? Aye. Mr. Welch votes aye. Mr. Yarmouth? Yes. Mr. Yarmouth votes aye. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Mr. Murphy votes aye. Ms. Spear? Yes. Ms. Spear votes aye. The clerk will report. On that vote, Mr. Chairman, 17 ayes, 22 noes. The amendment is not agreed to. Next, we go to the Yarmouth Amendment, on which a voice vote for no was recorded. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Issa? Mr. Issa votes no. Mr. Burton? Mr. Burton votes no. Mr. Micah? Mr. Micah votes no. Mr. Platts? Mr. Platts votes no. Mr. Turner? Mr. Turner votes no. Mr. McHenry? Mr. Mc, uh, McHenry votes no. Mr. Jordan? Mr. Jordan votes no. Mr. Chaffetz? Mr. Chaffetz votes no. Mr. Mack? Mr. Mack votes no. Mr. Wahlberg? Mr. Wahlberg votes no. Mr. Langford? Mr. Langford votes no. Mr. Amash? Mr. Amash votes no. Ms. Burkle? Ms. Burkle votes no. Mr. Gosar? Mr. Gosar votes no. Mr. Labrador? Mr. Labrador votes no. Mr. Meehan? Mr. Meehan votes no. Mr. Desjardins? Mr. Desjardins votes no. Mr. Walsh? Mr. Gowdy? Mr. Gaddy votes no. Mr. Ross? Mr. Ross votes no. Mr. Ginta? Mr. Ginta votes no. Mr. Farenthold? No. Mr. Farenthold votes no. Mr. Kelly? Mr. Kelly votes no. Mr. Cummings? Mr. Cummings votes aye. Mr. Towns? Mr. Towns votes aye. Ms. Maloney? Ms. Malone, uh, Maloney votes aye. Ms. Norton? Ms. Norton votes aye. Mr. Kucinich? Mr. Kucinich votes yes. Mr. Tierney? Mr. Tierney votes yes. Mr. Clay? Mr. Clay votes yes. Mr. Lynch? Mr. Lynch votes yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Cooper votes yes. Mr. Connolly? Aye. 
Mr. Connolly votes aye. Mr. Quigley. Mr. Quigley votes aye. Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis votes aye. Mr. Braley. Mr. Braley votes aye. Mr. Welch. Mr. Welch votes yes. Mr. Yarmouth. Mr. Yarmouth votes yes. Mr. Murphy. Mr. Murphy votes yes. Ms. Spear. Ms. Spear votes aye. Mr. Walsh. Mr. Vote, uh, Mr. Walsh votes no. Have all members voted? The clerk will tally. On that vote, Mr. Chairman, 17 ayes, 23 noes. The amendment is not agreed to. The question now occurs on the amendment in the nature of a substitute as amended. All those in favor signify by saying aye, aye. Those opposed, nay. In the opinion of the chairs, the, the ayes have it, the ayes have it, the amendment is agreed to. A roll call vote is. The amendment in the form of a substitute is agreed to. Uh, with that, we move to the underlying bill as amended. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Issa. Wait a second, wait a second. Okay. I move. Thank you. I move the Committee on Oversight and Government Reform report H.R. 2309 to the House with the recommendation that that bill do pass as amended. The question is, on favorably reporting H.R. 2309 to the House, all those in favor signify by saying aye, aye. Those opposed, nay. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Issa. Aye. Mr. Issa votes aye. Mr. Burton. Mr. Burton votes aye. Mr. Micah. Aye. Mr. Br Micah votes aye. Mr. Platts. Mr. Platts votes no. Mr. Turner. Mr. Turner votes aye. Mr. McHenry. Aye. Mr. McHenry votes aye. Mr. Jordan. Mr. M Jordan votes aye. Mr. Chaffetz. Mr. Chaffetz votes aye. Mr. Mack. Mr. Mack votes aye. Mr. Wahlberg. Mr. Wahlberg votes aye. Mr. Langford. Mr. Langford votes aye. Ms. Ramash. Yeah. Ms. Ramash votes aye. Ms. Burkle. Yeah. Ms. Burkle votes aye. Mr. Gosar. Yeah. Ms. Go Mr. Gosar votes aye. Mr. Labrador. Mr. Labrador votes yes. Mr. Meehan? Yes. Mr. Meehan votes aye. Mr. Desjardins? Yes. Mr. Desjardins votes aye. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Walsh votes aye. Mr. Gowdy? Yes. Mr. Gowdy votes yes. Mr. Ross? Aye. Mr. Ross, Ross votes aye. Mr. Ginta? Aye. Mr. Ginta votes aye. Mr. Farenthold? Aye. Mr. Farenthold votes aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Mr. Kelly votes aye. Mr. Cummings? Yes. I'm sorry. No. Mr. Cummings votes no. Mr. Towns? Mr. Towns votes no. Ms. Maloney. Ms. Maloney votes no. Ms. Norton. Ms. Norton votes no. Mr. Kucinich. Ms. Mr. Kucinich votes no. Mr. Tierney. Mr. Tierney votes no. Mr. Clay. Mr. Clay votes no. Mr. Lynch. Mr. Lynch votes no. Mr. Cooper. Mr. Cooper votes no. Mr. Connolly. Mr. Connolly votes no. Mr. Quigley. Mr. Quigley votes no. Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis votes no. Mr. Braley. Mr. Braley votes no. Mr. Welch. Mr. Welch votes no. Mr. Yarmouth. Mr. Yarmouth votes no. Mr. Murphy. Yeah. Mr. Murphy votes no. Ms. Spear. Mr. Ms. Spear votes no. The clerk will report. On that vote, 22 ayes, 18 noes. H.R. 2309 is ordered reported to the House. I ask unanimous consent that the staff be authorized to make conforming and technical changes to the bill. Without objection, the motion and unanimous consent are agreed to. With that, I ask unanimous consent that the committee favorably report I am sorry. I got them backwards. Sorry. Okay. The committee will now consider H.R. 3124, the Federal Advisory Committee Act uh, amendments of 2011, and S-300, the Government Charge Card Abuse Prevention Act of 2011. It is my intention that these, these bills be considered by unanimous consent. Does any member object? Does anyone wish to speak on the bill? Uh, I recognize the ranking member to speak on the Very briefly, bill. Mr. Chairman, and thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, I appreciate the willingness. Mr. Chairman, I appreciate the willingness you and your staff have shown to work together to ensure the bill is strong and 
provisions will function as intended. The Federal Advisory uh, Committee Act amendments uh, was introduced during the 11th, 111th Congress by Representative Clay, and it passed the House on July 26, 2010, by an overwhelming vote of 252-124. The text of the uh, legislation was included in H.R. Uh, 1144, the Transparency and Openness in Government Act which I and all Democratic members of this committee introduced on March 17, 2011. H.R. 3124 will make important changes to one of uh, our core open government laws, the Federal Advisory Committee Act. Advisory committees enable uh, subject matter experts and industry practitioners to help advance the business of government by offering advice to the President and to all the Federal agencies to help inform some of their most important uh, decisions. The bill will expand the transparency of these advisory committees by requiring agencies to disclose information about how the committees are formed, who is serving on them, and what uh, interests these members represent, and what business has been presented to uh, the committees for uh, consideration. The bill will also ensure that members who provide expert advice to the advisory committees disclose any conflicts of interest they may face. Mr. Chairman, ten separate open government groups have uh, now endorsed this bill. Uh, the Project on Government Oversight, the Union of Concerned Scientists, OMB Watch, and a number of other groups sent a letter praising our legislation as a major step towards uh, government transparency and accountability, and they noted that our bill will close many of the FACA uh, loopholes uh, that have emerged in recent years strengthen disclosure requirements regarding conflicts of interest, provide uh, for greater transparency of meeting proceedings, and create more opportunities for the public participation. And I would like to enter this letter into the record. Without objection, so I also extend my thanks to uh, these groups for their hard work, their continued vigilance, and their dedication to making government work more effectively and efficiently for the American people. I strongly support H.R. 3124. I urge all of our members to vote in favor of the legislation I commend. Mr. Clay for his continuing work. Uh, as to, and the, Mr. Chairman, the serious fiscal challenges facing the Federal Government demand uh, agencies do everything they can to uh, operate as effectively as possible. Agencies also must be accountable for their expenditure of every single taxpayer dollar appropriated to them. The Federal Government spends billions, of an, billions annually through its purchase card pr uh, programs using purchase cards and convenience checks to acquire millions of items everything from paper and pencils to computers and to make payments on government contracts for a variety of goods and services such as vehicles and relocation uh, services. The primary responsibility for re purchasing these items uh, rests with the cardholders and officials who approve their purchases. Federal employees hold positions of trust, and Congress and the American people expect cardholders and approving officials to maintain vigorous stewardship over the Federal funds at their disposal. Specifically, purchase cardholders and approving officials are expected to follow published acquisition requirements and exercise a standard of care in acquiring goods and services that is necessary and reasonable for the proper operation of an agency. Every Federal dollar that is spent on fraudulent and proper or abusive purchases is a dollar that cannot be used for essential government goods and services. So ensuring that purchase cards are used responsibly is a particular concern at this time when the United States is experiencing significant fiscal challenges. S-300 will strengthen and codify the internal control agencies uh, must put in place to ensure the proper use of travel and charge cards. Under this legislation, agencies will be required to perform credit checks on potential recipients of travel cards. Agencies also will be able to discipline employees appropriately if they misuse charge cards, including terminating their employment. Most importantly, S-300 uh, will, will hold agencies accountable for charge card misuse by requiring the Inspector General of each agency to examine charge card use twice a year and to report any violations to the Office of Management and Budget. I strongly support this legislation, and I urge our members to be supportive. I join with the Ranking Member uh, in his brief statements and would recognize the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Farenthold. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I had uh, proposed an amendment to S-300 that I'd... Uh, the text of your amendment entered and withdrawn will be placed in the record. Thank you very much. I, I would like to uh, speak on the amendment that... Uh, the gentleman is recognized. Thank you. Uh, 
Um, I offered the amendment because Americans uh, expect to uh, their government to take care of the money that they entrust with us in tax dollars. And I think S-300 goes a long way towards doing that, but I also think it is necessary to clarify how agencies should proceed with respect to uh, State and local taxes that are erroneously applied to charge cards issued to uh, Federal employees. Uh, we need to reduce the cost of Federal government wherever possible. The charge card program allows Federal employees uh, to make these purchases on behalf of the government. Very often uh, what happens is clerks at hotels and restaurants will erroneously charge State and local uh, sales tax to the Federal Government under the uh, Supremacy Clause of the Constitution. They can't do that. We are not subject to taxation by the State. So Warren Buffett may want to pay more taxes. I don't think the Federal Government needs to be paying any more taxes. So we need to take care of that. The amendment that I offer uh, allows Federal agencies to contract with third parties to collect these funds. However, I am going to withdraw the amendment so we can go ahead and get it through and offer this as standalone legislation. I thank the gentleman. And uh, with the unanimous consent, it not only will be entered in the record, but we will include in report language uh, advice that they do that, uh, if at all, within their power. Mr. Chairman. With that, I recognize the gentleman from Missouri, Mr. Clay, for his will, brief remarks. I will speak briefly in, uh, on H.R. 3124 and thank you, Mr. Chairman, for considering this bill today. And I want to thank the ranking member, Mr. Cumming, uh, for his support during the process of crafting this important bill. And uh, I have introduced this bill in the, each of the last two Congresses, both times it passed this committee and the House with bipartisan support. Uh, and I am confident that this time, uh, under your leadership, Mr. Chairman, we will be able to get it enacted. So I, I yield back and thank I you. thank the gentleman. And uh, uh, hopefully my leadership in the Senate will get many bills passed uh, with Mr. Cummings' assistance. With that, I ask unanimous consent the committee favorably report H.R. 3124, the Federal uh, Advisory Committee Act of 2011 and S-300, the Government Charge Card Abuse Prevention Act of 2011. Without objection, so ordered. Oh, I am terribly sorry. Did you, did you want to speak on this? No, I have a, a, a separate issue. Mr. Okay. Then I will come to you in a second. Uh, without objection, so ordered. The Chair now recognizes the gentlelady from California, Ms. Spear. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would like to ask unanimous consent, knowing that the outcome of the votes would not change the outcome of the amendments that were taken up, that I be uh, registered as voting yes on 035 by Mr. Cummings, yes on 036 by Mr. Lynch, yes on 021 by Mr. Clay, no on uh, Ms. Burkle, and yes on 096, Ms. Norton. Without objection, so ordered. The committee stands adjourned.